Sure. So gene editing therapy in the realm of HIV has become an area that's gotten a lot of attention, as has gene editing in many other areas. And a lot of that is based on some new advances in the technology and the ability to really simplify our, our goal of trying to edit certain genes. From the HIV perspective, I would say the area of where there's the greatest interest is as we move forward in the, the realm of cure research. So HIV treatment has gotten so effective and easy to take, the natural next step is to try to cure people. Uh, and what we've learned over the last several years is there are some obstacles to doing that. And, and one of the major obstacles is that we have this persistent reservoir of virus within the body. Um, so once someone is infected, they have this. So people have been attempting to learn more about it. And there's one known example of an individual that's been cured of HIV, the so-called Berlin patient. Uh, and the things that were unique about what the Berlin patient underwent was that one, he was known to be HIV infected and he was suppressed on antiretroviral therapy. But based on our experience, we know was not cured. He developed acute leukemia and as part of his treatment required a stem cell transplant or bone marrow transplant. And he had very progressive uh, oncology specialists in Germany where he was diagnosed who were able to identify a donor that had this unique inherited genetic defect where they didn't express an important receptor for HIV on the surface of the cells, so-called CCR5. So this was an individual who acquired this deleted gene from both the mother and the father. And we know that these individuals, of which they represent maybe 1% of the Caucasian population, are relatively resistant to HIV infection. So the Berlin patient underwent intensive chemotherapy and radiation therapy in the stem cell transplant. He ended up relapsing with his leukemia, went through the whole process again, was sick as a dog, uh, and stopped his antiretroviral therapy because he was so ill, but ultimately went into remission for his leukemia. And they went to restart his antiretroviral therapy and they did a viral load and there was no virus there. So the thought was that there were probably a variety of things that this individual went through that resulted in him, what we believe is cured now, it's probably going on nine or 10 years where he's been off therapy with any hint of virus rebounding or in his body. Uh, and one of the possibilities was it was the unique bone marrow that had this mutated gene. Now the problem is you can be born with it if you're lucky enough, but most people don't have it. And a bone marrow transplant is not a viable option moving forward. So the, the obvious next step is if we think that was an important part of the cure in the Berlin patient is to try to see if we can induce that. And gene editing in one form or another provides an opportunity to do that and people weren't lucky enough to be born with this mutation. So what you can do is you can introduce something like something called zinc finger endonuclease or you can use this new technology called CRISPR that could allow you to target the CCR5 gene that's normal in most people so that it becomes abnormal, much like what the Berlin patient received in their bone marrow transplant from an individual who was born with two abnormal genes. So you basically take the patient's cells out of their body, particularly the CD4 cells, the target for HIV, that require CCR5, and you do gene editing so that that cell population no longer expresses CCR5. And this can be successfully done in the laboratory and then these virus, these cells can be reinfused into the body. Um, so that's, I think, the main area of interest right now, although there may be others, that people are really thinking about gene editing and trying to see if we can move the cure agenda forward.